All right. Now, tonight I want to share on something that is very, very significant and important to the body of Christ. And sometimes, you know, we think that everybody is at the same level when we come to the body of Christ or when we come to the church. You know, we just kind of have that tendency to believe that everybody ought to know certain things. And it's not necessarily so. Tell your it's not necessarily so. So tonight I want to help us some. I want to talk about growing up spiritually. Now you grow up naturally, you know, like people say, sometimes you grow up as weed. And <laughs> sometimes you grow up as something that can be helpful and meaningful. So we don't want to grow up as weeds. No, 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 because weeds to be cut and to be burned. We want to grow up the way God wants us to work, grow up. Tell your neighbor, it's time to grow up. And it's sad that there is probably not one church you can go to that you don't see a lot of things that are out of order, are not in order, simply because the people have not been taught to mature in the church or the house of God, just like parents expect you to do where? At home. I mean, if you're a parent, you expect that child at some point in time to have some understanding about what he or she should do and not necessarily do things the wrong what? way. Amen. So growing up spiritually is a process that takes time. It's not something you just all of a sudden, hey, I'm a tool. No, no, no. I don't want to get ahead of myself. But you know, there are a lot of people that got a lot of captions. There are a lot of people that got a lot of captions to come and do this and do that. And they didn't train us to do it. And they may start making a mistake to get angry. Well, you don't have a right to get angry if you haven't taught a person something. Come on now. You don't have a right. Now, you can get angry if you want to, but you're the one that's in, in, in fault. You should have taken the time to what? Train. Look at the military. They'll never send a man out there to war without first what? Training. You mean the church doesn't understand its un, you know, work that it's supposed to be doing? We have to train as what? As well. So it's absolutely important. Now, the fivefold ministry gifts as the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher are given to help build up the body of Christ so that it can grow into maturity and do the work of the ministry. And do the work of the what? Ministry. There's a lot of work to be done in ministry. And you see, the ministry is not like the club. At the club, you know, they say, it's your what? Oh, no, nah, yeah, I know I'm in the right crew. <laughs> but not in the church. That's not the way it's supposed to be in the body of Christ. You see, a lot of people still haven't learned how to love one another. Still working on what? Loving one another. Well, he, he old I am, ain't got nothing to do about being in the church. It's a total different atmosphere. It's not like in your house. No, it's a total different atmosphere. Here you're in God's house. Now you might cuss in your house, but you shouldn't be cussing in here. Not because the preacher doesn't like it, and that should be a, a, one of the things, but it's because God has said that kind of information or that kind of stuff come out of your mouth is not his will. We don't curse, we bless. What do we do? We bless. Yeah, you said by God, I will bless the Lord at what? All time. His praise shall be what? See that? Well, that go for people too. People are important. And we have to learn how to love them. We have to learn how to love them. Everybody don't, don't need the same kind of love. Some folk don't want you always in their face. The lesser you are, the more they love you. <laughs> I hope that ain't no me. <laughs> but we got to get it together. We have to do this. You know, and the same thing is true with, with, with the different auxiliaries in the church. It's amazing how you put people in an auxiliary and you haven't trained them to do nothing. And all they're trying to figure out, what, what should I be doing? How, how, how should I do this? Now, when I was coming up in, you know, in our church, 
Now, they taught us. Put that hand behind your back. There is. <laughs> Had to put that hand. Again. Now, look, y'all ain't know nothing about no issue. That's all right. But they, they raised me up to the chief at one point in time because I was working so good. <laughs> he put that hand back there. <laughs> Come on down. Come on. <laughs> Amen. But in the body of Christ, this is the simplest place it is to love people. But the world has made it that the club is the simplest place to love people. And the reason is they're all high. <laughs> hey, man, you my mama, brother. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> See, that's that stuff talk, man. That, 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 ain't, that ain't the real deal. That's that stuff talk. But in the body of Christ, it should be our spirits that are speaking to people. You might have differences with people because of something that might have gone on in the past. But the Bible says what? Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself. Where? And doing what? Bringing into captivity every thought into the obedience of Christ. Yeah, some, of, some, some of the folk that might have taken your sweet thing or show up in church and you've been enjoying service all the while. Woo! Hallelujah. And they said, whoop. There he is. There she is. No, 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 no. Forgetting those things that are what? Behind us. If that person had been yours, they'd have stayed with you. Hallelujah. You got to say them. That's all right. Amen. They'd stay with you. But some people, you know, when they join you, just for a little while. Till they get themselves together. And then they G O N E. So that's why you need to check them out. Check them out. Thoroughly. Amen, amen, amen. And then sometimes that's not enough anyway. And stop asking other folk about them because sometimes folk want you to be in as much trouble as they're going through. They haven't held a dear house. They believe you ought to have some at your house. So you're, yeah, best person in the world. And then you get married. How come you didn't tell me? Well, you didn't ask me about that. So it's important that we do these things. That's what God wants us to what? Do. He wants us to have a happy life. When people come in, it shouldn't be some facade. It should be a genuine smile. It should be a genuine smile. And in a genuine what? Embrace. You love the people. Now, when you were unsaved, now you were in the club, you know, you're drunk, you'd be happy anyway. <laughs> you haven't forgot you when you're high. You, not, well, y'all don't know about that. But y'all know the influence. You, you know, everybody looks good. <laughs> and everybody's your friend, you know. But in the body of Christ, we don't have to get high on that stuff. We high on the Lord. So at the same time, we still have the same attitude. Everybody looks good and everybody's nice. Oh, Jesus, is this the right group? Oh, come on. So <laughs> it, it's just God's will. See, just as a person starts as a babe in the natural realm and grows to adult, the same thing happens in the church, in the body of Christ. He might be 99. If he's just born again, what is he? A babe. Now, you're going to still be treating them like a 99, but you should be treating them as, now, I don't mean belittling them, but I mean doing so much for them until they just get overwhelmed. They know that you love them because if it didn't, you would be doing the things that you do for them. All right, listen. You, you, you've got to be taught how to win. There can be some people that come in here, and you might be urshering, or you might be doing something else, and especially if you're an urshering, and they might have taken your sweet thing. You might have been wanting to marry that person, and they got it. I ain't going over there. She'll get a seat. She's about to find it for herself. No. See, that's how, you, that's how you break the chains of the enemy off of your life. When you go and do something for somebody that has done something wrong to you, it says something in the kingdom of God. Amen. You can sing the song, but you will not be defeated. But if you don't do what God's word says, you are going to be defeated. Not because God wants you to be defeated, but because you haven't done what the word says. The word says, James said, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, for they that hear only deceive themselves. And you don't want to be what? Self-deceived. We don't come here to lose. We come to win. We are winner. Whatever goes on, we still win. You win if you keep your chest out and your chin up. You know, keep looking like you're winner. Don't be looking like you're down and out. 
The Bible says, why we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things that are not seen. Look at the reality of the thing. I win either way it go. Look at your neighbor and say, I win either way it go. Amen. And especially, especially in the helps ministries. Especially. See, because they're the people that meet everybody first. And then we're the ones next, especially you all, they sit beside you. And some people, when they sit beside you, if you had a little issue with them, you turn your back to them. That's the time. See, that's how that devil has been, he, he's been zapping the strength and the power out of the church because the church still acting like the club. You know when you're at the club and you had the table set up and somebody came and sat there and you know that you got a little issue with them, they don't get one of them glasses. <laughs> no, because you bought that, uh, you know, you, you bought that little, <laughs> the field for the paint or whatever it was you got. You bought that and you ain't willing to what? Share. Look at you looking at me strange. You know what I'm talking about. You ain't always been in church. And if you were there, you were still slipping and sliding, peeping and hiding, been told a long time ago. <laughs> so we just got to get real for God. Get real for God. So people can learn they, they really are loved. You don't know some people come out of some houses, so much hell been on that house, the devil didn't have to stop. He was scared to go in there. <laughs> and they come here and meet hell too, and you think they want to get saved, want to get delivered? Ain't no way. From what? If y'all got all them problems, why I want to get like y'all? No, I don't mean to get you. <laughs> okay. So it's important. As I shared you, just like a person starts as a babe in the natural realm and grows into manhood or adulthood, the same is true spiritually. But we just, we, we hadn't been doing it like we're supposed to. And sometimes auxiliaries can get too, in too big a hurry and pull people in. And you never had an opportunity to see whether or not they ha do have the consistency. Uh, they do have, you know, it, it's a smile often and not a smile for certain people. It's a hug often, and not a hug for certain people. I mean, I mean, see, we, we have to learn how to love. You remember the story about the man who took the parrot to the church after he had gotten saved? See, before he got saved, he took the, the, the parrot to the club. And the parrot was doing his thing when they got the rock and the parrot rock. Go right ahead, go right ahead. Is that our song? Is that our song? <laughs> <laughs> well, when the, you know, the man got saved, he took the parrot to the church with him. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, when the bands kicked up, <laughs> the parrot just took off like he was when he's in the club. <laughs> it sure thing. The man said, wait a minute, <laughs> you, you're in the church. It's same people, just different place. Same people, just different <laughs> We don't need that now. We don't need that. No, no, no. There has to be a difference. God didn't put, this, put us under this banner for us to be contrary. Uh-uh. And you know, there, there will be times when people will come and want to sit beside you, and you've had some issues with them in the past, or maybe you've got still some problems because some people don't turn things loose real fast. No, no, you, you did me wrong once. You might try to do it again, so don't, don't, do nothing. don't even come my way. But that's not God. The Bible says, when a man or woman's ways please God, he will make even their enemies to be at peace with them. It's a dangerous thing when you touch the hands. Uh-uh. If, 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 you you got to understand how special you are. And the enemy wants to whop us to get us in a position where God can't do what he wants to do. I don't know, I've been praying, I've been praying, I've been fasting, I've been reading my Bible, and I've been doing this and doing that, and I still ain't got no breakthrough. We don't break through. We receive. What, what are you breaking through? Walls? I'd like to see that. It's still in them walls. If you break it with your head, I pay you <laughs> and patch it myself. But see, God wants us to get in a position where we, we, there's so much love in us for God. For who? For God. The only reason you're not able to love other people is because God is not loving in you. 
And you just can't love the folk you know. You got to reach out to other people. And everybody don't want you embracing them. You have to, that's why the Spirit of God has to talk to you. Maybe it's a handshake. Maybe it's just a kind word. Oh, I like that that you have on. It looks so nice, you know. But it does, yeah. You just, you just open the door. But the church is one of the most unloving places in the world. The church is. And we, we're the one that say we got love. And we do, but we just hadn't understood that we got to drop some stuff. We have to drop it. A lot of the prayers that people have prayed have not been stopped by the devil. Stopped by the people. Does not the word of God say, if any two of you on earth shall agree as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall. Shall is one of the strongest words in the English language. It shall be done for them by my Father, which is where? Well, wait a minute now. Has God lied? Well, what's happening? It's so difficult to get to, I mean, husband and wife. You're not going for them. Because you always got issues. Issues going on. And he says, a house divided against itself cannot stand. God never created or invented divorce. Hmm. If you remember the, the, the pledge that you make, you say, unto death do us depart. And some folk die and ain't dead. <laughs> they die and ain't dead. You know, they, they, still, they still alive, but they ain't got the one they started with. Now, don't get under condemnation because you had to let somebody go. Might have been better because you might have shot him. It was better to stay, get yourself together. But you got to understand. You got to understand. Unless you just married to get out the house. Now you you're out the house, you're trying to just find everything you can find. No, that's not God's will. Mm -mm. And don't ever think that when you get married, there ain't going to be somebody that look better and got stuff, there's going to be somebody that got some stuff on them that you might have wished that you had waited. But you got an ants in your pan, just run off and grab the first train that was smoking. But now that you got what you got, you need to keep it. There used to be a song out back in the day, it's cheaper to. Oh, y'all know them songs. <laughs> it's cheaper to keep. <laughs> and look at baby, I, I, I ain't letting you go. Me and you gonna have to pray hard. We're gonna have to stay on our knees and get on our backs. How we gotta do it? We gotta get this thing what? Together. You remember the guy, I was grinning his teeth about it because I like his song. He used to sing, let's stay together. Y'all don't know them songs. That's just me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's do the ball all night, you know. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Why don't y'all let me just go and just <laughs> let me get on into this message. <laughs> okay, now write this down. Every born again Christian be begins his or her walk as a spiritual babe but must mature. Every born-again Christian begins his or her walk as a spiritual babe, but must what? Mature. That's why it's so important, especially in hips ministry, that you give people an opportunity to kind of grow, sit under the word first before you grab them and put them in places. See, because some of them some of the wrong folk can walk by, you know, and there'd be, be a whole lot of little issues going out through that. Might have taken that look. <laughs> I know a guy like Shadow Man because took his look. You know, that wine, wine and whiskey ain't, ain't that expensive. But look how long you're going to be in jail for just shoot somebody over that little stuff. <laughs> so we just got to get it right. Tell you, we got to get it right. <coughs> So it's not just for <clears throat> members in the church that this has to happen. It's for everybody. You know, the same thing is true with us as ministers. I told y'all about this. Y'all know my story, most of it. There was this man who was a minister, and uh, the folk made him mad. You know, he, 
He'd been doing all the praying and fasting, doing everything he could, and the folk made him mad. <laughs> and one Sunday morning, he got up, got to the altar, and got ready to preach, and he did a turnaround on him. Turn around, dropped his pants, <laughs> and said, y'all, y'all just, this just, <laughs> preacher, pastor. But <laughs> he had just taken as much as he could what? He could take. And he dropped them on him. <laughs> and it, this is true. This, this stuff like this happened. It happens. <laughs> So you had to watch how you treat these ministers and other folks. <laughs> it might take your picture. <laughs> no, Lord, I didn't mean to do this. Huh? All right, come on, y'all. Help me out. Help me out. Oh, Jesus. The fivefold ministry gifts are given to the body of Christ to help us to mature and to grow spiritually. Let's turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4. Amen. <clears throat> it's important that we be taught, though. You know, and some people just feel like, well, I don't, and you have to go over there, you have to go to school. No, it's not going to school. We just want to try and help to make sure that you're excellent in what you what? Do. Say, neighbor, that's what we want to do. Make you excellent like you can be. Come on, so make you excellent like you can be. You're an excellent person. Look at somebody and say, you're an excellent person. In Jesus' name. Are you have you found Ephesians chapter 4 yet? Ephesians chapter 4. <clears throat> you there? You there? Look at verse 11. We're going down to verse 15. He says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. See that? What was the rationale? Now, the Amplified says right there, he says, uh, his intention, <coughs> excuse me, was for perfecting and the full equipping of the saints, his consecrated people, that they should do the works of ministering toward building up Christ's body, the church. Building up. What would happen if every person who walks through that door would meet a pleasant smile, a warm handshake, a warm hug, a real soft voice? Yeah, it doesn't always have to be a man or have a woman. I mean, you, there, there's a voice you can help people to kind of just melt down just a little bit so that it'd be easier for them to come into a place. You know, there's a way to do it. You know, you did it in the club. And you were in the club, if you were one of the members of the club, you had a way of helping them to come in because you wanted them to be a member of that, what, that club. Well, we just got to take our time. Tell you, we got to take our time. Look at somebody else, take our time. Got to take Look at it again now. Uh, let me go back there to verse 11. He says in the Amplified, He who descended, right there, is the very same as he also has what? Ascended high above all the what? Heavens. Are you there? Oh, wait, wait, I'm sorry, I'm at 10. I'm sorry, I'm at 10, verse 11. And, he, and his gifts were varied. He himself appointed and gave men to us, some to be what? Special messengers, some people what? Inspired preachers and expounders, and some what? Evangelists, or preachers of the what? Gospel, traveling what? Missionaries, some what? Pastors, shepherds of his what? Flock and what? Now, his intention was for the perfecting and the full equipping of the what? His consecrated what? That they should do the work of ministering toward building up Christ's body, the what? The church. See what our purpose is? Every person has inside of him or her the ability to be a leader. But because something happened down the road, maybe they might have been disrespected or turned off, and they don't feel like they, they have the ability or have whatever it takes to help other people to come up to where they are or even get better than they are. We're not in competition. If there's any competition, it'd be loving people more than the other person loving and not knowing how much they love them. But we need to have the people to understand that this is God's what? Will. When God gave me the name for this ministry, because I never wanted to be a preacher and I never wanted to minister, I was a hush. 
I was in the choir, all right? So I like put my hand behind my back there and say, come on down. <laughs> Amen. But the way they talked about my pastor, when God called me, I said, is that what you asked me for? He said, who told you I said that? So you got to understand, this is not something that I wanted to do myself. I knew I, I knew I had the ability to do what I needed to do for myself all by myself in my own thinking. I can think. Man, I can think. So what God wants us to do is, is to get his church like he's already said it should be. We should be a people of love. You got, you got to love folk because how can you say you love God in whom you have not seen and hate the people that you see every day? You might have differences, but get over them. That affects your health, your well-being. It affects you when you got all these issues on you about this person and that person. The best thing do, to do is, is turn it loose. Amen. Tell you, it's time to turn it loose. Amen, amen, amen. Well, be like the song, if loving you is wrong, I don't want to do right. Yes, you want to do right. Yeah. Say, if you want to do right. Do right. All right, come on back now. Let's look at verse 12 again. Are you there? He said, his intention was the perfecting and the full equipping of the what? Saints. Look what he calls them. In fact, his consecrated what? People. That's who we are. Listen that they should do the works of ministering toward building up Christ's body, the church. So all of God's efforts, as far as he's concerned, where the members are concerned, is building other people up. And you can't build nobody up until you get what? Built up. So we have to first start working on our what? Self. And one of the ways to do that is by praying in the Holy Spirit. But then there are a lot of people in the body of Christ who said, them tongues are of the devil. I don't know how. They got that information, unless you heard the devil trying to speak in tongues. And he does have some gibbish. He does have some gibbish, but what we speak is natural. There is a language that when you're speaking in tongues, there is a language of a people. You might not know where they are, where they come from, but there is a language of a people or group that speaks the language that you speak. You call it tongues, but it's their native tongue. So there's no gibbish. It's a language. It can be understood. And somebody in the world somewhere knows that language. Oh, they're speaking another language. Yeah. But we do it how? In love. How do we do it? In love. Tell your neighbor, so how we do it? Amen, amen, amen. You remember what the Apostle Paul said? When I was a child, what did he say he did? I speak as a child. I understood as a what? But when I became a man, what did he say I do? I put away childish things. Doesn't mean you can't have fun, you know, tease each other in a nice way, or, uh, you know, but you still have to remember we are always in a position to be a blessing to somebody else. And sometimes blessing is just smiling. Some people can be around mean folks so long they ain't had a smile all day. Even the dog barked at them, the cat, Row! and here you are, and you give them a smile, a handshake. And give them a word that your blessing is, is on its way. And they know the only way you could have known that is that God had to inspire it in your heart so that it can come out of your what? Mouth. Amen. And when we start doing that, things will change in the body of Christ. It'll help your own health. It'll help you. Amen. I mean, you, you, a lot of the challenges that other people have, you won't have them. It's not because you're better than they are, but because you're doing what they're not doing. The love walk is the strongest, most powerful walk that you can ever walk. Living and loving people without regret. And really, you know, when you're doing, when you're getting down to the point of loving them right, <clears throat> it's when you meet some of them old, you know, best, best way to check that. If you had an old flame that you thought you were going to get it together and y'all going to be husband and wife loving each other and somebody came in and just kick you to the curb, and when you see them, ain't nothing but love coming out. It's got to be love. Got to be God love when ain't nothing but love coming out. Yeah, I know y'all like saying that somebody done somebody wrong, 
But when you're in Christ, can't nobody do you wrong. Can't nobody do you wrong when you're in what? Christ. Because you know when heaven goes out, God got something better coming back. Come on now. When heaven goes out, what's happening? God got something better coming back. And they're going to be ooh and ah and too. And my time is up. And I thank you for your Get a lot of hand clap.